What's in this box and everything falling out? But this is half of your quiz next week. We so are exam? Yeah, that's right, you have an exam. This will be on your exam. It won't be half your exam. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we're going to start. What is this? What's happening here? Fertilization. Fertilization. So this is a... Zygo. What's happening here? Cleavage. Cleavage! All right. What is this, say ye? Morula, blackberry, raspberry. Okay, so now I have a hollow tennis ball. So this must be Blastula. Blastula, Blastula or blastocyst, if you're human, you're the cyst. So then you're supposed to name some stuff. What do you call the cells on the outside of a blastocyst? Trophoblast. Well, that'd be when it's eating, before it becomes trophoblast. Mm -hmm. The inner cell. Uh, inner cell would be the yellow on the inside. Blastomeres. Remember, blast build mirrors like polymers. Monomer. Wait, I'm sorry, what was the blastomere? Outside. The, outside. the cells on the outside of a blastocyst are blastomeres. Mm -hmm. Then you have the yellow, which is the inner cell mass, or ICM, on a test you can put. Right? So then what is it doing here? What are those feet doing? They're eating. They're eating. So what do you call it when I'm eating in the mom? Uh, now I'll say trophoblast. Tro tro that's my trophoblastic stage. I'm chewing in the mom. Nice. So that's a stage and a region? It's a, it's a thing, kind of stagey. But the implantation stage, but trophoblast is what's eating Doesn't that become like the placenta? That will eventually become the placenta. Yeah. But on this, on this diagram, trophoblast is indicated on the opposing side of where the cells are going to be. The inner cell mass Yeah, but usually... It seems like it makes more sense for it to be... Yes, yeah, the bottom where you're going to burrow in. Right, okay. So then that ends up being this. So here we have green is mom's uterus. This is you. Here you are implanted inside mom. So then you have the yellow and the red, which are colored absolutely backwards from what you think they're going to be. And the way you're going to prove that is looking at this model. The red thing, what do you think it's supposed to be? Yolk sac. That's a yolk sac. Every yolk sac you've ever seen is yellow, but on this model for 500 bucks it's red. <laughs> That's a yolk sac. Because you are supposed to be red, but you're yellow. I didn't color this. Right? Aren't, they, made aren't those made in Germany? Germany. Oh, <laughs> <yes>. <laughs> My prisoner is from Korea. Right? Oh, come on, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but let's name some stuff. So here you are. Then we have the outside part of you. What do you call the outside part where you live? Chorion. Chorion. So this is all the chorion. That's the little ball you're living in. So what do you call these little fingers sticking out? Chorionic villi. villi. Those are the fingers that are growing into mom. Right? And then you have the space you're in, which would be full of fluids. So you're living inside the amnion. amnion, or amniotic sac, or cavity. So you're in the amnion, which is the inside hollow part. The chorion's the outside tough part. And the chorionic villi are the fingers growing into mom. Make sense? All right, so then you have some more logic. The mom part has names. The mom part where you're growing in, that's called the decidua basalis. The mom part where you're not burrowing in is the decidua capsularis. What does it mean to be a deciduous tree? You lose your leaf, so your uterus loses the baby. That's where the decidua comes from. Right? What so is the capsularis and which one is the basalis? Basalis. basalis is where the fingers are, capsularis is where there's no fingers. Mm -hmm. So the, are the, is there villi on that? Yes. Okay. So the villi would be all over, but the placental side, the really thick side, is always the basalis. Okay. Yes? What, what do you mean the uterus loses the baby? Well, it's like losing leaves. The doctor's name. The baby comes out, you've lost your leaves. So it's deciduate. Bad analogy. <laughs> well, that's how they named it, right? Deciduous trees lose their leaves. Deciduous uteri lose their babies. That's where the logic comes from. So the decidua is mom's uterus, not the baby. It's mom's uterus in relation to the baby. So decidua basalis, decidua capsularis. Okay. So they're basically saying that mom and baby are split. They are rather split. Rather than, because people think, oh, she lost the baby. But well, you always, you never had the baby, right? The baby's just living. Yeah. Right? It's just, you're the host. You're the yeah. host. Yeah. They're squatters. Right. They're squatters. I love babies, but yeah, they're squatters. Make sense? <laughs> I'll buy your baby. <laughs> Let me show you. Even when they're older sometimes, they're squatters. Older. I want to adopt teenagers, but not until I'm older. So. <clears throat> okay, here's the placenta up close. So this is, the, this is mom and babies. The problem with this model is 
This is your umbilical cord. Mm -hmm. So in your book, they have it like this, which is perfectly fine. But this is uterus, this is baby, and this is the connection between mom and baby, so that's your placenta. So the problem is figuring out what you're staring at. So if this is umbilical cord, this part is all part of the baby's contraption, pedal placenta. If this is uterus, this is all maternal placenta. Are you with me? So if you follow along, there's an outside brown layer here, which would be in the very outside of baby. So what was it on this model, what was the very outside called? Chorion. Chorion. So that brown layer down there is the chorion. This is on the inside of the baby, where the fluid is. That would be here, which would be the amnion. On this side, though, mom's side, you have the endometrium and the myometrium right there. Then you have this connection between them, this hollow space. So if you follow my finger, this big finger-like thing is coming out of the chorion into mom. What do you call the fingers out of the chorion into mom? What are those called? That's the chorionic villus or villi. But if you notice, there's then a space around it. What do you call the space between the fingers? Intervillus sinus. So these spaces are between the finger spaces. And that's where the exchange is going to occur. So you have the fingers coming up from baby, and you have the interdigitation to mom's uterus. And that's what you're seeing here. The problem with this model, like those, is the colors are backwards. If you look up here, in baby's belly button, you have some red things and blue things. What are reds and blues? Arteries. The problem is they color them wrong. The two little ones should be blue. Those are the arteries. The big one that's single should be red. That's a vein. Why would it be blue arteries and a red vein here? Wasted. What does red and blue have to do with? Oxygen. When you're a baby in utero, who's oxygen? Oh, yeah. mom. mom is. So you're blue going to mom because you don't have air. You're red coming back from mom because she just breathed for you, right? It's like a lung. So the two things going to mom should be blue. The thing coming back from mom should be red. But it's artery because it's going away from baby's heart because baby makes it. Vein going back to the heart because it's directional, not color. Make sense? But they colored this wrong for 900 bucks. Right? So on the fetal side, the colors are backwards. The arrows are correct, but the colors are reversed. Make sense? Maybe we spent $1,000, we get it correct. Those are damn Germans. <laughs> <laughs> what is the yellow stuff? I don't know. Fat? I'm not sure. Yeah, not sure. Make sense? So just remember the colors are, are weird on all these models, but you should be able to go through on these models and be able to tell me what the stage is, how old you are in terms of weeks, what you're doing in each step. That would be a good plan. Now on this model, make sure you can tell me you know, who's doing what and why. Those are really the only two models of pregnancy that will appear soon. So we got the giant baby. You can take the baby out and hold her. That's nice. That's box. <laughs> oh, the box. The box, unfortunately, doesn't have anything that's on your list. Okay. Oh. So it skips between, it's basically before this box and after this, which is not on your list. <laughs> Those two pieces would be your best plan. And then make sure you do your next problems, a la Biology 112. Those will be on your exam as well. Where do you say? Where can we find them? Kind of square, kind of square kind of stuff. So we will do an incomplete dominant, complete dominant, sex link, recessive. Can, we get, can you make an example of one? Sure. Do um, you want like in the lab manual, like on your exam? <laughs> Duh. <laughs> Percentages of each. So, do you want to put capital X, lowercase x kind of thing? I wouldn't pick X. Do something different. R. Capital R. R. So, who's going to be the capital R? The dominant. How many capital R should he have? Two. Two. Could be one or two. Could be 
be one or two. Aha! Let me add a word here. So it's recessive? Heterozygous rolling nail. Now tell me which one it is. Hetero means I'm digging a little, right? Non-rolling female would have to be what? To the lower earth. To the lower earth. she'd roll if our girl numb it. Okay? To make children, what do we have to do that begins with M? Besides marriage. <laughs> That's a joke last year. Do meiosis, right? So, what kind of sperm can heterozygous male make? A R R R. Right. Half will be big R and half will be little R, right? By meiosis, half the genes are random. How about the girl? All of them are going to be little R's, right? Because it's half meiosis. So, children are going to be what? Let's do a box, put a square, a box, right? So, big R here, little R there. Remember that vaguely? So, give me their genotypes. Which, what's our genotype mean? Big R genome means the these, love. right? So 50% big R, little R, or heterozygous, 50% homozygous recessive. Right? Give me their phenotypes. 50% rollers and 50% rollers and 50% non-rollers. Because phenotypes how you look, genotypes are the letters. Or you can say half-half, you know, two, one to one. So if you, to do these problems, you have to keep track of homozygous, heterozygous, dominant, recessive, and genotype, phenotype, and all that kind of language from 112. If you can basically walk through this kind of language, there's examples in lab 46, Wazoo. You can kind of walk through, and then all it's changing is how you're interpreting it. Are you going to do like 16 boxes? Or? No, we don't want you doing 16 boxes. Okay. So it'll just be this little one right here. This little one or something like this. Suppose I gave you this one, just okay. to tell you something. You have a roller with a non-roller. And they have four children <laughs> that have these. Oh, and not these. So wouldn't you just fill in the box <laughs> and then go backwards? Oh, hold on. Let me change. Hold on. I started thinking ahead of myself here. That way. There's our four children. Some of the genotypes of the parents. 75. No, I want the parents. I killed you the kids. So wouldn't you just fill in the box and then go backwards? You can. Or you can look at it mathematically and figure it out. They're both hetero. They're both hetero. <laughs> no, they're not both hetero, I guess. <coughs> One of them is Okay, non-roller has to be what? Little R. Little R. Little R. Otherwise, it should be a roller, right? This guy has to be a what? Homozygous. And how'd you know he had to be heterozygous? Because everybody would be R. Right? Yeah. This person, yeah. Right? Oh. That person has to get a little R from both parents. Mm -hmm. These people have to get a big R from one parent, therefore the heterozygous and a homo. Same as this, right? Mm -hmm. They also be able to work backwards. If we told you the kids, could you think your way back to the parents? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. because of, yes? So for the first one, my impulse would have been to have on the Y. Or two little R's, but and I understand why you only have one little R because yeah. the mom can only contribute. Huh? So, so like this. Yeah, that's how I. That's would, fine. That's how I would have drawn it. So yeah. you wouldn't have fifty percent, then you would have twenty-five. Yeah, you still have the same. It's double. Right? Okay. Okay. Awesome. They just be doubling. So that's why you can. You, yeah, you can always. That's all perfectly right to do each one as twos. It's just that when a row is duplicate, you can sort of ignore. Okay. How do you want us to answer like ratio, like three to one? Well, you can do percentages, like 50, 50, 25, 35, whatever. Uh, you can do a ratio. In this case, the ratio would be 1 to 1, because they're even. You can do 3 to 1, whatever. Yeah. You can do 50, 50. You can do percentage. You can do half, half. As, as. How you answer the percentage question is sort of irrelevant, just as long as you give me a number that seems reasonable. So I don't have to do the ratios of the percentages. <coughs> percentages are easier. If you just do it as percentage, you probably won't get screwed up by it. But... Lab 46 has a, like 10 pages of those that you can practice. But there will be guaranteed to be some genetic problems on your exam. At least one. Memory serves me from years past. Just one? Well, at least one. Just one. <coughs> there is all 112 again, right? So is our exam still going to be just 1 through 75 with a blank piece of paper? We yeah. like we still have all the reproduction models and all that stuff. Yeah, it's reproduction pretty much, right? Pretty much UA is on, so everything from peeing in a cup onwards is on your exam. Mm -hmm. So anything from thereabouts. So Hi. Slides. Yeah. So no slides for pregnancy. Yeah. And no slides for genetics. What you want to do is make sure you use your time wisely because the open labs are changing next week, so you may not get that salvation.